everybody and welcome back again to Let's Play Assassin's Creed 2! I am back in Monte di Giorni, as you can see. Although I am still wearing the mask for the carnival in Venice, funnily enough. And yeah, I actually didn't realize that at first, but I have a different cape as well. It's not the Medici cape, it's a different one. I think I got it along with the mask and it actually fits quite well with my current black and white color scheme, does it not? But yeah, I'm here uh, in Monterey Journey because I have to return a bunch of stuff. First of all, a number of codex pages. Uh, but I have been doing some work. I have been doing a lot of work, actually. I have a few days off at the moment, so I have a bit more time on my hand. And I decided to start working on one of the grindier aspects of this game, which is to collect the feathers. And I found this useful thing over here, um, the DNA, which uh, first of all it contains all the missions I have finished already. Apparently I'm in sequence 9 at the moment. It also has all the uh, side missions and collectibles, including the feathers, and it's actually um, divided into the different locations. So as you can see, I basically picked up all the feathers in those locations where I have already explored the entire map. So Florence, um, the Villa, San Gimignano, Forli. I still have a bunch of feathers to pick up in Venice, obviously, but so far I haven't even explored all of Venice, so I'm going to do that later. But yeah, I have 60 feathers now, so I'm finally getting somewhere with the feathers. So um, I'd say we return the feathers and then we're going to return the codex pages and we're going to read them. And then we're going back to Venice. So let's drop off the feathers. And yeah, a bit more value. I've seen you bringing oh. Maria the feathers. I appreciate what you're trying to do for her, but you have to face facts. It's not working. Maybe you should focus on more important things. I've had a new weapon made for you at the blacksmith's. You can go pick it up whenever you want. All right. I'm sorry, Ezio. Condottiero Warhammer now available. Okay, so I actually get some stuff for doing this. But yeah, she's still not talking. But then again, I haven't collected all the feathers so far, right? So I have a new weapon. Um, well, I just bought a new weapon recently, the Sword of Altair, which I'm going to assume is probably the best sword in the game, because, I mean, the armor of Altair is probably the best armor, so I'm not sure if the weapon that I can get is better than what I already have, but I'm going to pick it up anyway, because I think I have almost all the weapons, so I need it to complete my collection. Um, no, not armor. Let's see. Yeah, it's not better than my current weapon, but I'm going to buy it just to complete the collection. There we go. Send me your amici. Okay. Oh, and I'm actually wearing the new weapon now. Well, um, I do want I do want my uh, other sword back, so let's quickly grab the sword of Altair from our weapons locker room. Um, let's see, this is it, right? Yes, it is. I do wanna equip this. There we go. But yeah, I think. My weapons collection is complete. I guess I can have a look at our book over here. Salute, Claudia. You here to look at the book? Right, look at that, 91%. Shops are finished, renovations are finished, collections are getting better. I have all the paintings, I have all the models. I still need some feathers, more codex pages. 
And yes, I have all the weapons. So I only need one piece of Misaglia's armor and of course the armor of Altair. But I'm I'm getting there. I'm getting there. A presto, Ezio. We will get this villa to 100%. I'm sure of that. Okay, now let's uh, return a few pages. I have, I think, five. Three from Forley and two from Venice. So, let's put them down. And, yeah, I need to rotate them. And while I'm doing that, I can also read them. Page 4. What follows are the three great ironies of the Assassin Order. 1. Here we seek to promote peace, but murder is our means. 2. Here we seek to open the minds of men, but require obedience to a master and set of rules. 3. Here we seek to reveal the danger of blind faith, yet we are practitioners ourselves. That's a good point. I have no satisfactory answer to these charges, only possibilities. Do we bend the rules and service to a greater good? And if we do, what does it say of us? That we are liars, that we are frauds, that we are weak? Every moment is spent wrestling with these contradictions and in spite of all the years I have had to reflect, I still, can't, still I can find no suitable answer and I fear that one may not exist. Nothing is true, everything is permitted. Does our creed provide the answer then? That one may be two things, opposite in every way simultaneously. And why not? Am I not proof? We of noble intentions, possessed of barbaric means. We who celebrate the sanctity of life and then promptly take it from those we deem our enemies. <laughs> that's, that's a good point. I mean, sometimes I feel kind of bad for killing guards. Like, for example, the two guards on the ship, you know, who were talking about, well, I want to go back to my wife and have dinner. I mean, those aren't really enemies. They are just city guards doing their job. And I feel kind of bad killing them. But sometimes there is no real way to not kill them, right? I mean, I usually try to avoid killing guards just because. But if it's a mission, um, there is no real way to avoid it, I guess. Okay, so... Apparently Altair had some questions about that as well. Let's rotate the map. Um, this one must be new. Page 24. Some days I miss my family, or at least the thought of them. I never knew my parents well, despite them both having lived within these walls. It was our way. Perhaps they were sad, though they showed no sign. It was not allowed. For my part, so much of my youth was spent in training. There was little time left to reflect upon the separation. And so when they finally lost, when they were finally lost to me, it seemed no different than the passing of two strangers. Al Mualim had been my fa had been as my father, and his was a weak and dishonest love, though at the time it seemed enough, better even, or so I thought. Someday I will have a child, such is the way of our order. And I will not make the same mistake, nor any who call themselves an assassin. We shall be allowed to love our children, and in turn to be loved. Al Mualim believed such attachments would weaken us, cause us to f cause us to falter when our lives were on the line. But if we truly fight for what is just, does that not make such sacrifice simpler, knowing that we do so for their gain? So I guess Altair was basically born into the Assassin's Order. I wasn't really sure about that, how he got to be an Assassin, but that would explain it. Okay, let's read this one too. Page 14. Men seek dominion over all that he encounters. I suppose it is a natural tendency for us to aspire towards mastery of our surroundings, but this should not include other human beings. Every day more and more are pressed into service, by deception or by force. Others, though not so firmly imprisoned, are made to feel as if their lives are worthless. Have you seen the ways in which men persecute women, heard the cruel words, words hurled at those who come here from other lands, watched as those who believe or act differently are made to suffer? 
We discuss the such things often, watching as we do from the spire of Mashav. What can be done to stop this, to encourage tolerance and equality? Some days we speak of education, believing that knowledge will free us from immorality. But as I walk the streets and see slaves sent off to auction, my heart grows cold. When I see the husband hurl abuses and stones his, at his wife, insisting she exists only to serve him, my fist clench. And when I see children torn from their parents so that another man might profit, send off to suffer beneath a desert sun and die, one these day on these days I do not think that dialogue will make a difference. On these days I can think only of how the perpetrators need to die. There are some interesting thoughts going on in Altair's head. Okay, what else is new? I guess this one needs to be rotated. There we go, but this is not correct. No, it is. Page 26. I have the answer now. I know the truth. I shall not touch that wretched thing again. Best that no one do, now or ever. I have tried at last to destroy it, but it will neither bend nor break nor melt. Oh, the irony. I am certain if I ask, the apple would tell me what need to be done. But even this promise is insufficient. Always it holds one more gift to give. I must refrain. So it shall be sealed. We will take it to the island, once there's now ours. There is a treasury there, hidden well, and it shall have to suffice. Risky to separate myself from the artifact that others may discover it. Riskier still to keep it close. In time I will be tempted. I am weak. We all are. Who wouldn't be? Oh, the things I have seen. The tale is here inside the text. Not between the lines, but beneath them. Where only our eyes might peer, go and see it for yourself. That you might succeed where I and the others have failed. Time marches on, bringing with the new discoveries and developments. And so at least one day the doorway might be opened and the message delivered. They will have their profit. Okay, so he sealed away the Apple of Eden, and, and I think the island is Cyprus, because we've seen Cyprus on other Codex pages already. So that's where the Apple is at the moment, huh? Page 28. Success. We have found a way to alter the structure of the hidden blade, so that it can be used to launch small projectiles. It is capable of grievous damage, even from great distance. I confess the means by which I came about the discovery was risky to say the least, but I have found that in small doses and with a focused mind the apple can be used without ill effect, or so I hope. Oh, so he got the knowledge about the pistol from the apple. Aha, uh -huh, interesting. The knowledge of projectile combat is not new to us, having been observed amongst our eastern neighbors, but their weapons were much larger and insufficient for our needs. I have now found a way to min miniaturize their designs, embedding their fiery weapon into a form that can be worn on the wrist. We have also refined the formula for combustible powder, such that common ingredients might be used. This is a dangerous bit of knowledge, and it is best shared with only our closest allies. Okay. Um, yeah, it's looking good. I think that's all the new pages. No, this one is new too. Let's have a look at it. Page 17. Of all the things I've seen, none troubles me more than the image of the flames. Pillars so tall they seemed to pierce the heavens. The ground rumbled and shuddered, mountains split and crack, great metal towers splintered, their innards strewn about the ground, and everywhere there was screaming, a chorus so terrible that even now I feel it, e its echo still. What is this madness I have seen? Is it them, I wonder, those who came before? Is this where they went, into the fire, into the dust? Perhaps this destructive power is what the Templars seek, that they might hold it over us and command devotion. What hope would we have then if they held such darkness in their hands and they could, that they could murder the world? I have no idea, Ezio. 
Okay, it's it's getting it's getting there. It's getting there. I only need two more pages, I guess. Nice. All right. Um, now that I have returned all of the stuff, I guess I will go back to Venice. I mean, I still have a seal to return, but um, until I have all the seals, it's not going to be useful anyway. And speaking of seals, I think um, I would like to visit another assassin's tomb now. Because there are two of them in Venice, and one of them is in the um, San Marco Basilica. So, that's what we're going to do today. Let's head back to Venice, and yes, I can go to San Marco pretty much directly. Alright, here we are. Um, let me have a look at the map. Yes, we do have an assassin tomb somewhere in this basilica. However, it is a restricted zone, so that's going to make it a bit more difficult. Um, let me have a look at this place. I mean, judging from the fact that it is kind of transparent on the map, I guess it's not on the ground floor, no but, but maybe on the roof. The so, um, let's use the same way we used last time to get on top of this, which was over here. And let's see if we can find... <coughs> That entrance now. All right. <coughs> Do we got any guards on top of this? Um. You well, apparently it's somewhere. Around here. Um, I guess I'm going to pick up the treasure while I'm here. Oh, there it is! Oh, and we have a guard over there, so let's quickly enter the tomb. This is the sarcophagus. San Marco's secret. Solve the riddles of Basilica San Marco to find the assassin seal hidden within. Alright. Activate the puzzle. What? Um. This is a pretty impressive place, by the way. Uh, but apparently I need to go somewhere over here, according to the marker on my minimap. So, um, it seems like I can just open the sarcophagus already? Ooh! Well, this is new. Solve the four trials. Oh dear. So, how... Does it work? Okay. Well, I guess a cutscene is trying to show me the way, so through the corner, over the balcony, to the other side, and whatever that is. 
Um, pull the lever before it retracts. Oh, this is on the timer? Oh no, <laughs> this is horrible. <laughs> okay, but um, I think I know the way. Oh no, stop it with the wonky cameras, please. Okay. Um, and right, now over to the balcony. Now I need to get to the other side. And I guess I can use a cross over here to do it. Alright. What is this, by the way? Oh, this is like my timer. I see. And that over there as well, I suppose. Okay, it seems like I still have a lot of time. So can I climb the organ here? Yes, I can. And I guess I just jump and grab it. There we go. Okay, this wasn't so bad. Gave me a fair amount of time. All right, let's drop down here and let's um, try the next one. Okay, pay attention to the route. Up the boxes, through the hallway, onto the balcony, over the cross. And then towards the window. And there's our lever. Okay. Hope I got this. So we're going to start with the boxes over here. Right, and then I need to get into the hallway on the other side of this. Like so, I guess. And now I need to get on top of the balcony. Can I like, climb up here? Okay, I can. And onto the crosses. And now towards the window. I'm not sure if I should use balcony over here to do so. Might be advisable. All right. There we go. And I guess this is conveniently placed. There we go. Okay. Yep, this isn't so bad. The timer is not too strict. <laughs> so I'm feeling better about this now. Right. Uh, two down and two to go. Let's pick this one next. Okay, um, I need to get into the hallway again, onto the balcony, and that's our lever. Alright, this doesn't seem so bad, but how do I get on top of this? I can't, I can't jump it. Can I climb this and then jump backwards? Yes, I can. Alright. And now I need to go back into the hallway over here. Um, oh, what am I going to do here? Um, okay, this might be a bit more difficult. Ah, I can climb up here. Okay, let's, let's try this. Okay, okay, that's where I need to go. And now what? Ah, okay. Um, okay, uh, I'm just going to make a jump backwards, I guess. <laughs> and that worked. All right, here we go. Nice. Now oh, this is going to form the Assassin's logo, right? Once I've turned all of the four pieces. Okay, one more. Okay, into the hallway, up 
the wall onto the other side and back to the big window. All right. Let's do it. Um, I need to start somewhere over here. Um, but where? Maybe I can climb this. No, I can't climb this. Um, this doesn't have like a convenient box. Or is this like the place to start the white cloth over here? Ah, there we go. Okay. Lost a bit of time here. So might have to do that again. Okay. This is working out well so far. Now into the other hallway. And right, I can climb up here. And now up onto the altar. Oh, and I think my time is slowly running out. All right, a uh, jump, jump. There we go. That was close. That was close. But I made it. And yeah, it's the Assassin's logo. Okay, we made it. This was pretty exciting. Can I just drop down here? Oh, okay, I can. <coughs> but I still take some damage. Anyway, I guess um, I can enter the real grave now and um, this is a real sarcophagus and the one on top is just like a fake. Huh? I see. And what's with all these skeletons over here? That's rather creepy. So who are you? Oh, I think she's the Egyptian one. She killed Cleopatra. All right. Interestingly enough, the Egyptian one doesn't have any Egyptian stuff in her grave, while some of the others had. Weird. Anyway, let's uh, grab our seal. There we go. And yes, we can leave again. But I still need at least one more grave other than that. So we have one more tomb over here. But that's not all. That's not going to be all. But yeah, um, now that we've finished this, um, I guess we should have a look at our new area over here. Maybe I'll start by visiting the viewpoint and then we can check out the next mission. Um, no, this is not the right direction. I'll pick up that treasure before I continue. Ooh, look at this! La Rosa de la Virtu? Uh, let me have a look at that codex entry. La Rosa de la Virtu. Located at the crossroads where sex and religion collide, La Rosa de la Virtu, the Rose of Virtue, was run entirely by former nuns. The Pope repeatedly attempted to force the Venetian Council to shut down the brothel, but it remained open until a fire in 1516 consumed it. 
Although the church tried to claim divine intervention, jurists found the fire to have been set by a disgruntled bishop who wanted to lie with one of the girls for free. Act of God indeed. <laughs> well, that's interesting. Very interesting indeed. So, this is the new part of town, um, and apparently we already have a lot of people preparing for carnival, like performers. The world-famous Carnival of Venice began in 1296 as a public holiday on the day before Lent. It soon became a time for masquerades, pa parties, theatrical performances, parades, street dances, axe throwing, flirtation and general hijinks like, you know, killing animals in public to amuse a crowd or rolling pigs and carts down the hill and into the river. All in all, Carnival was an important predecessor along the road to reality TV. <laughs> Well, nice. Well, the city that I live in also is famous for its carnival, although it is quite different from the Venetian carnival. It has a very own carnival tradition. Okay, so apparently this is where my next main mission is. Um, sure, let's go and uh, check this out since we are in the area and then we are going to visit a few viewpoints. Antonio, we need to talk. <laughs> Ezio! Ezio Auditore! Teodora, meet the most uh, <coughs> talented man in all of Venezia. Madonna. Ah, Sister <laughs> Teodora. I never imagined you as a religious type. <laughs> it depends how you understand religion, my son. It's not just men's souls that call for soothing. Come! Join us, Ezio. Have a drink. Meet the ladies. Ah! Murderer! What's going on? Butcher! He oh, no. to Chia and stole So, money. Messer Ezio, let's see just how talented you are. After him! Okay. Damsels in distress. Chase down and kill the murderer. That I will do gladly. So, let's go. Um, away, he has a bit of a head start. Come. Don't come any closer. Or I will carve up another oh, one. Why? Oh, that's him. But for some reason I couldn't move for a moment. Get away from me. That was unfortunate. And I think they want me to use a pistol for this according to their little screen I just got. So let's equip the pistol just in case. And now I need to catch up with him. Alright, here we go. So maybe I'm just going to she left at me. Use my she normal me weapon because I need to I need to aim in order to Another use my pistol. There we go. Well, um I guess he managed to kill a few more. That is unfortunate. But yeah, there was a moment when I was just stuck in place and I couldn't actually attack him. So that was not my fault that he got away. I swear. <laughs> but okay, let's uh, go back to um, Antonio, I suppose. It's over here. And yeah, look at all these people. Apparently, everyone's already getting ready for carnival. All who need aid are welcome here. All right, let's go. <laughs> you have our gratitude, Ezio. Why is it wherever you go, trouble follows? This is not my fault. I trust you know why I'm here. <sighs> I imagine to rid Venice of Marco Barbarico. But really, Ezio, we did this once already. And this new Templar Doge is a bigger culo than the last. Never mind that he never leaves the palazzo. Yes, except for tonight. Marco wouldn't dare miss Carnevale. How do you know this? In fact, he's throwing the biggest party of them all. But getting in won't be so simple. You'll need a golden mask for entry. And before you think about forging one, keep in mind each mask is numbered. Fortunately for you, 
I have an idea. Let's see if we can't win you a mask. Okay. None the wiser. Speak with Theodora about Marco Barbarigo. Yeah, I'm going to do that, but I think I would like to postpone it for later because before I continue with any more missions in this area, I would like to visit all the viewpoints so that I have a full picture of the map. So let's decline for now because I guess I can just come back later and then uh, start the mission again. But for now, um, yeah, let's visit some viewpoints. I, I have I have read that already. I really just wanted to go onto my map. Okay, we have one over here and I'm pretty sure this one will show me more viewpoints to uncover. So let's go. Ranger man, truly. All right, I've reached the viewpoint. It's a pretty standard tower. Seen a lot of those before. So let's synchronize. Okay, let's have a look at the map. All right, more viewpoints over here and apparently more contracts. So maybe I'm just going ahead and I will uh, visit all the viewpoints and there might be time for one contract to finish the episode. And I found another viewpoint. And this one is actually not just a viewpoint, it's also an assassin's tomb. And it has a database entry, which I just got, so let's read it. It's this one. Santa Maria della Visitazione. I bet the view from the top is awesome, <laughs> I'm sure. Located on the waterfront, Santa Maria della Visitazione is a second church in Venice with that same name, making it easy to end up at the wrong wedding. <laughs> The church was founded in the 1400s and dedicated to Saint Jerome, the patron saint of librarians and encyclopedia writers, but then was rededicated to the Virgin's visit with Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist. Perhaps because visits are usually accompanied by food and quite simply more fun. <laughs> ah, poor Jerome. He got his thunder stolen. Alright, so yeah, this is an assassin's tomb, but um, I will not uh, actually visit the tomb today, but I do want to check out the viewpoint, and I, apparently there's a guard on the other roof, but I only saw his shadow. <laughs> Alright, I guess I can climb up here. All right, um, oh, I actually have to climb on top of the cross. All right, let's synchronize. All right, nice view from here over different islands. And this over here is the Canale Grande, I suppose. Um, let's see. Okay, there's one more viewpoint over here. And... No, this is a contract, not a viewpoint. Okay, I'm going to visit that viewpoint as well. And I was kind of hoping to find maybe more glyphs. But so far, I haven't found any. Where's my stack of hay? I think it's over here. <laughs> yep. Alright, let's move on. Oh, this is a nice place. Apparently the party is already in full swing. Alright, and this over here seems to be my final viewpoint, so let me try to find a good way to get up there. Um, this might work over here. I can use my leap jump.
one right. And that's it. Alright, are these all the viewpoints now? Yes, apparently so. But I believe there's still another area over here that I haven't unlocked yet. Alright, but yeah, um, I guess we have a bit of time left, so why not do one more contract before we finish? <coughs> Alright, what do we got here? No laughing matter. Several of Archbishop Saviati's fellow conspirators are trying to hide from justice. They have taken advantage of Carnival to disguise themselves as harlequins. Find them among the revelers and strike them down. Alright. Kill the three harlequins. I guess they are some of those performers we've seen before. Alright. Let's do it. Um, let me have a look at my map. Oh, they're spread all over the place. But where is the third one? I thought there were three harlequins. I am confused. But okay, let's start with the one over here. Yeah, it is three harlequins on my mini-map. <laughs> anyway, I will... I will look at that later. And for some reason, my marker just disappeared. Why? Um. Why doesn't this work? Let's try it again. Okay. Now, let's find our target. Okay. Must be somewhere around here, huh? Ah, there we go. Um, so many people. So let's try the poison blade. Oh, we have guards who are basically protecting the entire area. Um, well, I can just jump into the water and and approach from here, I suppose. Alright. Why? Never mind. I don't want to know. Okay, that's him. Um break something I guess I can actually use my normal blade here. There we go. Yep, nobody saw that. Not even the person he danced with. <laughs> That's totally normal stuff to happen, right, here in Venice. Anyway, um, one target down, two more to go. Ah, one was hiding under a treasure, apparently. <laughs> okay. Let's see, what's the fastest way to get there? Well, not not like not like this. <laughs> ah, that's actually quite useful, jumping on boats. Um Yeah, let's let's stay on the streets. Ah, there we go. Again he, he has a lot of Oh, um and now he's running away? Well, that was your mistake. That was definitely your mistake. Running away instead of staying in that protected area. Alright, I'll make a quick exit. And I'll go for my next target. There we go. Let's try to find a way to get out of the water. 
Not over here. Um, is there any way to get out of here? We might be able to just climb up here. Let's see. Alright, this works. Okay, now let's find our final target. And oh, hang on a second. New database entry, Santa Maria dei Camini. If you had skipped this entry, you'd be on top of the church by now. What? Built in the 1300s, Santa Maria del Camini, Camini for short, was founded by a group of women who made their livelihood stitching monastic aprons for the monks in a nearby Carmelite monastery. Carmelites believed so much in these aprons, or scapulars, that the Carmelite constitution stated it was a serious fault to sleep without one and saying mass sans scapula resulted in automatic excommunication. Why? Because in 1251 the Virgin Mary made herself known to Simon Stock of Cambridge and she told him that those who wore a brown scapula would be granted salvation. So, 200 years later, a group of women still huddle inside Santa Maria dei Camini, working all their lives to manufacture salvation distilled in the form of brown aprons. <laughs> well, that's a fairly easy way to get salvation. Why not? And why? Why would I skip this entry and why would this make me want to climb this church? I mean, at some point I might, but not right now, because I have some important business to do. Okay. I see my target. Let's be a little bit more careful this time. Oh, I think... He may have noticed me. Yep, he totally did. Oh, and now he just disappeared. <gasps> oh well, there we go, no laughing matter. I did it. I killed three harlequins. And, oh yeah, I should probably pick up the treasure inside there. But I think the episode is definitely long enough now, so I'm going to make a cut here. And tomorrow we will continue um, to immerse ourselves into Carnival and try to get that golden mask, right? So as usual, thank you for watching and see you again next time.